A library with complete information on the history of all creatures that have been present on Earth since the beginning of time. A collection called the Book of Life, which is the root of the common beliefs and myths that have been repeated throughout human history. Imagine a computer system that has had access to the entire world and has recorded the information of every person who has existed in the history of Earth. Not only the basic information, but the whole data of that individual's or creature's life, from actions and words to feelings and thoughts, and even every idea that has crossed their mind, all of it is stored in this system. And of course, not as separate and categorised for each individual or creature, but all interconnected and functioning as a unified whole for the history of humanity. Popular beliefs and ancient myths also have roots in the data of this integrated system, which is why a large part of folklore and mythological beliefs is common among different civilizations. It's as if the people of ancient times wrote their narratives from a common book, a book as vast as the entire universe, whose pages are filled in real time by the actions and reactions of the beings in this world. It is a book depicted in mythological narratives as celestial tablets, where one can see the history of humanity as well as the future. This book is referred to in some narratives as the Book of Life, and in some interpretations it is called the Akashic Library. It is the source of many dreams that have led to discoveries and inventions throughout human history. And in some beliefs, it is part of a divine mind aimed at guiding each creature to become the best version of itself. The belief in these divine tablets was so deeply rooted among people at one time that it entered religious narratives, becoming the same preserved tablet in Muslim beliefs, a tablet on which all the events of the universe are written. In some interpretations, the record of deeds given to Muslims after death also comes from this tablet or book and includes all the good and bad deeds, large and small, that humans have done throughout their lives to the extent that even the act of blowing on ashes is recorded in it. In a narrative recorded in the book of Exodus, after receiving the Ten Commandments and the chaos caused by the worship of the golden calf, Moses goes to seek forgiveness from his God and talks about a book written by this God. Similarly, in a part of the book of Psalms, David talks in a song about a book in which all the days of his life are written, even before they come to pass. If you also, based on a religious belief, believe in the existence of such a book, and get upset by hearing discussions contrary to your beliefs, do not watch the rest of this video, because this divine book inspired this man to present insights that challenge many monotheistic religious beliefs. Edgar Cayce was an American attributed clairvoyant who claimed to speak from his higher self while in a trance-like state. He mostly did psychometric readings. People with problems and illnesses would go to him, and after entering a trance-like state, he would give them information about their condition. Most of this information, according to his own explanations, was received from the Akashic Library. We have this description in his own words. I see myself as a point outside of my physical body. In infinite darkness, I have a frightening sense of loneliness. But suddenly, I notice a bright ray of light and move toward this light, knowing that I must follow this light, or I will not find my way. As I move along this light, I gradually notice various layers that are moving. In the initial layers, there are vague and frightening shapes like those seen in a nightmare. After passing through them, Disproportionate human figures appear with some parts of their bodies excessively large. Another change occurs, and I notice figures with grey cloaks moving downward. Their colour gradually brightens, and then their direction changes upward, with their cloaks continuously becoming lighter. Then rows of houses appear on both sides of the path, with walls and trees, but nothing is moving. The further I go along the path, the more the light increases and it seems that movement appears in the cities. As these movements increase, I notice sounds that are initially incomprehensible, 
but then turn into music and laughter, followed by the sound of birds singing. The light grows more and more, and the colours become much more beautiful. Then, you hear extraordinary music. As you leave the houses behind, there is only a combination of sound and colour ahead. It is here that I suddenly enter a hall of records, a hall without a roof or walls. Among rows of records stretching to infinity, an elderly man hands me a massive book, a book containing the information I am seeking about an individual. In discussions about the Akashic, every individual has one of these massive books, and each person writes the story and narrative of their life through their thoughts, ideas, and interactions with the rest of the world in it. This book also contains the future potentials and possibilities of each person, which change based on their behaviours and choices, and their final forms are recorded. Considering these potentials, the topic of future predictions based on reading an individual's Akashic records is brought up. However, in discussions related to Casey, we mostly deal with psychometric readings and the narration of human destiny in the prehistoric era. He believed in a form of reincarnation that occurs not in the earthly world, but in different dimensions. In the trance state he entered, he would refer to the records he found in the Akashic Library to see and describe the past life of the person who had approached him. Some of these narratives of people's past lives are related to Atlantis. That is, they describe the individual's life in the prehistoric period in Atlantis, and when all these personal narratives are put together, they form a clear picture of Atlantis's situation, at least according to Casey's belief. This is a topic we will discuss more in the next video. But in Casey's series of discussions, similarities can be found with the ancient Persian beliefs we have reviewed so far. Discussions related to the planets and their influence on human destiny. Casey viewed the solar system as equivalent to a university and each planet as a faculty. The goal is for the human soul to grow within this system. Mercury functions to strengthen the mind and advance the psyche, as well as to develop analytical, deductive and organisational skills. Venus is associated with art and creativity. Earth provides an opportunity for everyone to progress and grow through personal will. Mars is linked to madness and the power of choice, indicating that anyone can use life's energy forcefully for their own benefit. Jupiter is related to high mentality and ideal perfection. Saturn is known as the Transformer, providing an opportunity for a fresh start. This can be likened to the last gate before exiting the Matrix in Mithraic beliefs, meaning that if a soul has not achieved perfection, it cannot pass through, so returns to Earth and re-enters another physical body. Also, the human body did not exist from the beginning, but emerged on the scene through transformations in human history. The first examples appeared during the Atlantis period, where both male and female aspects were in one body. However, at a certain stage, these two aspects separated, resulting in the formation of the human male and female forms. This marks the beginning of humanity's descent from higher dimensions to the physical and material world. And this fall was not sudden, but gradual, occurring over several hundred years. Casey described Atlantis as a civilization far superior to today's human civilization that submerged in the Atlantic Ocean around 10,000 years ago. However, contrary to widely accepted beliefs, not all of Atlantis's inhabitants perished. During the relatively long period before its complete destruction, many of its inhabitants managed to reach different parts of the world. In the expanded versions of this idea, the Atlanteans, a race far more advanced than the native humans in other parts of the world, suddenly appeared in ancient human civilizations. Their technology was so advanced and unimaginable to the natives that they were regarded as gods and superior forces. In Casey's readings, we learn about the followers of two different philosophical and belief lines among the Atlanteans. The followers of the Law of One, who considered all humans and creatures as parts of a whole that should interact and balance with each other. And the second group, called the Sons of Belial, 
regarded themselves as superior to other creatures and believed that all others should serve them. These two groups took their philosophical and belief systems with them during their migration from the doomed Atlantis to other parts of the world. You can probably guess that the path of the Sons of Belial led to religious beliefs that consider humans as the apex of creation and endorse a form of social hierarchy. According to Casey, the Atlanteans who survived the destruction of their land brought with them a large amount of their civilization's artifacts and writings, which they divided into groups. The most important archive was located near the Sphinx in front of the pyramids of Egypt. Its entrance is hidden, and according to Casey, this hall will not be discovered until the time is right, and humanity is ready to receive and understand the truths.